Hi guys and welcome back for part 3 of the series. I've made some good progress over the last couple of weeks so let's get straight into it. As you can see from the thumbnail, I've got the first part of the acrylic housing completed, so let me show you a bit about the process. This is my CNC machine. I built it back in 2019 after deciding that my first machine was no longer suiting my needs. It features a work area of roughly 300 by 400 by 120 millimeters and is a fully enclosed design to help keep the dust and noise in. I will do some videos about this machine in the future as I have a couple of upgrades planned for it. The front part of the knuck deck housing is a four sided machine job, meaning I need to set the stock up four separate times on the machine in different orientations and ensure the alignment is as close to perfect as I can get it every time. I decided to tackle the outside front of the housing first as I think that's the safest way to machine this part. Using a larger CNC machine that I have access to through my work, I cut the stock down to roughly the shape of the part I need to make. This just makes it easier to fit it on my machine and minimizes the amount of time spent trimming the outside of the part. I also included two rebated holes in the stock in the middle of the screen area that I can put bolts through to hold the stock down on the machine. Since there is one millimeter left on all sides of the stock, I don't need to pay too close attention to the alignment on the first setup. So I just bolted it down, picked the corner as an origin and hit go. To begin with, the machine levels out the top of the material with a four millimeter end mill. So we have a nice flat surface. The acrylic is cast and is almost never dead flat to begin with. So this is usually the best first step to ensure everything fits the way it should. Next, the rebate for the touchscreen glass is machined into the plastic followed by roughing out the curved edges of the front face. This will later be cleaned up with a ball mill for a nice smooth finish. Whilst the large tool is loaded, I remove the bulk of the material from the holes for the buttons and the battery monitor screen, which will later be finished off by a smaller cutter for a tighter radius in the corners. To finish out the first step, I trim around the outside of the housing to get it down to the correct size and then swap the four millimeter ball mill into the machine to smooth out the edges. I tried making a time lapse of this with my GoPro in the machine since the process takes quite some time, but the result is honestly a little nauseating. I'll put a quick snippet here anyway to show you what I mean. Look away now if you get motion sickness easily. After a couple of quick runs with a 2mm and 1mm end mill, the outside of the housing was done. For the next step, I set up the housing on its side, hanging off the side of my work plate so I could machine the holes in the top and the bottom for the power and volume buttons and the charge and headphone jacks. To mount it, I used a piece of aluminium angle that I bolted down and shimmed until it was level and aligned to the machine. Then I bolted the housing to the aluminium through one hole and used a clamp to hold the other end. This tool is called the dial indicator. I'm using it to measure the height of the housing relative to the machine and adjusting it until it is as level as I can get it. Each little increment line on the dial indicator is 0.1 of a millimeter. So if I can get it level within one increment, it should be more than close enough for what I need. I repeated this process for the bottom of the housing and then moved on to the inside. I flipped the stock face down and used the dial indicator to align it to the machine as closely as possible. I set the origin for this side of the job to the middle of the stock in the X and Y axes so I could touch off both sides of the stock and halve the difference to hopefully correct for the small amount of run out my machine has in its spindle. I cut some pieces of scrap pine I had laying around and applied a layer of masking tape to both the stock and the pine before using super glue to glue the parts together. I was then able to bolt the pine down to the machine plate for extra support on the thin edges of the case to help reduce vibrations and keep the job in the correct position. The machine will hit these supports while it machines the inside of the housing, but that's okay as the pine is soft and the machine will have no trouble cutting through it. Most of the work on the inside is just removing material with the four millimeter end mill. In total, the machining for the front part of the housing took me about 10 hours of machine time with at least six of those hours spent on the inside of the housing due to all the material that needed to be removed. I think the result speaks for itself though. I'm very happy with how this part has come out. It needs a light sand on the edges to remove the tooling marks, but I will do that once I have completed the acrylic housing so I can sand it all together to ensure I don't end up with any misalignment at the joints between the parts. Since the last video, I have received a new display driver and tested it to confirm it's working. It has a built-in stereo amplifier too, which seems to provide more than enough power for the speakers I've chosen and has a switched headphone output. During my testing, I did notice some horizontal lines on the display when the volume was turned up too high, 
but fortunately at a safe volume for the speakers the lines aren't visible. So I've decided to set the volume on the amp permanently and to use the volume buttons on the device as media keys which will mean they adjust volume for Bluetooth audio too. Since I have a finished front housing and a working display driver I decided to fit everything in and see if I can get it to boot. I removed the HDMI connector from the display driver along with all the other unnecessary connectors and held the PCB down with some capped on tape to help ensure it doesn't make contact with the NUC at all. I also had to space the back cover up with a pair of washers, roughly 1mm, to clear the new display driver. I will update the model so this isn't an issue before I machine the back part of the housing or hand out any files for people to test. But it works. Now that I know what I'm doing with the audio, I can design a PCB for the other half of the controller and start working on the programming so I can test out the controller on some games in the next episode. I still have testing to do for the touchscreen as I'd love to have that working on the next revision of the PCB, so I will try and tackle that in the next couple of days. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you're enjoying the project. It really helps get these videos out there so we can build a community around this project. I've set up a Discord group where I'm posting some small updates between episodes and we will eventually use it as a support channel as people start building their own, so go and check that out if you're interested or just want to talk. I've put a link to the Discord channel in the video description. See you next time.